Happy Holy Day, Moors, and welcome to House of Reawakening Minds. House of Reawakening Minds exists to provide for exploration and practice of spirituality in an enlightened community dedicated to honoring the myriad of sacred pathways to the universal creator. We are a holistic center for spiritual grounding, free thought, self-discovery, and Moorish science, an awakening experience for all ages. Tonight, we are pleased once again to present our national grand sheik, Taj Tariq Bey, as he expounds on nature's law and nature's God and the negative activity at the North Gate. Let's receive him. Slam, slam, shalom. Why to make them? Uh, one of the things that we want to discuss is um, the principles upon which um, the fundamental constitution of man, the, the, the species, is built in uh, within harmon harmony with the laws of nature. Um, and I know I know a lot of times when people are talking about constitutional principles, their mind almost immediately goes to um, the fundamental principles embodied uh, via the Constitution for the United States, which you all know, comes from Honor Odyssey Confederation law, i.e. Muslim law. However, it's actually deeper than that. Uh, but we want to um, go over um, in, a, in a, a short order, say just an introductory, to fundamental divine principles, or because most of you who come here on the House of uh, we, we Awakening Minds are already uh, pretty much well groomed in fundamental, true, ancient uh, spirituality, i.e., uh, which also is referred to as metaphysics, etc. Um, so much that we talk about, you know, it's um, for the most part redundant. However, for many people are becoming conscious of the uh, dynamics of the human experience right now on, on, on Midgard, et cetera. And many people who are becoming um, conscious of their Moorish bloodline and pedigree and nationality and are making efforts to honor their mothers and fathers. Um, some things, sometimes things need to be uh, reiterated to you to bring you up to snuff a little bit. So we're gonna go over a little bit of um, fundamental Moorish science, which is also known as Hermetic philosophy. Um, for you know that the uh, fundamental principles uh, of Moorish culture is love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. <clears throat> so we're gonna go over the Kybalion. And many of you are familiar with the Kybalion, et cetera. And this gives you a little bit of background into divine law or nature's law, or what is often referred to as, as uh, nature's God, God, et cetera. So we'll share a few things with the um, listeners. And um, while this is not new to most of you, it is new to some. And so I feel it's necessary so that we can be uh, pretty much in harmony with the conversation and not necessarily be talking past each other because we want to uh, be talking with each other, not past each other. So the uh, seven hermetic principles. Now the principles of truth are seven. And he who knows these understandingly possesses the magic key before whose touch all the doors of the temple fly open. And that's a, a general philosophy of ancient Hikukta, or, or what you refer to as ancient Egypt. And of, of course, from that foundation comes your uh, world's um, derivative, religions, etc. However, for the most part, the priesthood has not necessarily shared the fundamental principles with the people at large, but instead has um, entertained the practice of um, presenting only the anthropomorphic angle um, of teaching, you know, the cosmological hermetic laws, etc. Um, and so most people approach their perspectives of, of spirituality or religion with what you call personified energies, 
as opposed to a knowledge of the workings of nature upon which you know the laws of nature are built etc and so um we're going to go through the seven just to share them with you in general uh, now the seven hermetic principles upon which the entire hermetic philosophy is based are as follows one the principle of mentalism two the principle of correspondence Three, the principle of vibration. Four, the principle of polarity. Five, the principle of rhythm. Six, the principle of cause and effect. Seven, the principle of gender. Now these seven principles will be discussed and explained as we proceed with these lessons in a short explanation of each however may be as well given at this point and so what we're going to do we're just going to go over the fundamental the rough a rough uh, introductory to the seven principles so that we can look at uh, our experiences from a more realistic and more harmonic basis with a uh, more attune attunement and attention to love um, and respect and uh, for remedy as opposed to emotionalism or harsh feelings, etc. Now, the principle of mentalism. The all is mind. The universe is mental. This principle embodies the truth that all is mind. It explains that the all which is the substantial reality underlying all the outward manifestations and appearances which we know under the terms of quote unquote the material universe and the phenomena of life matter energy and in short all that is apparent to our material senses is spirit which is in itself an unknowable and undefinable but which may be considered and thought of as an universal, infinite living mind. It also explains that all the phenomenal um, world or universe is simply a mental creation of the all, subject to the laws of created things, and that the universe as a whole and its parts are units or units has its existence in the mind of the all, in which mind we live and move and have our being. Now this principle, by establishing the mental nature of the universe, easily explains all of the varied mental and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public attention and which without such explanation are non-understandable and defy scientific treatment. Now, an understanding of this great hermetic principle of mentalism enables the individual to readily grasp the laws of the mental universe and to apply the same to his or her well-being and advancement. The hermetic student is enabled to supply, uh, pardon me, apply intellectually or intelligently the mental laws instead of using them in a haphazard manner. And with the master key in his possession, the student may unlock the many doors of the mental and psychic temple of knowledge and enter the same freely and intelligently. Now this principle explains the true nature of energy, quote unquote, true nature of power, the true nature of matter, and why and how all these are sub, uh, subordinate to the mastery of the mind. And one of the old hermetic masters wrote long ago, or long, uh, many ages ago, he who grasps the truth of the mental nature of the universe is well advanced on the path of mastery. And these words are as true today as at the time they were first written. Without this master key, 
mastery is impossible, and the student knocks in vain at the many doors of the temple. Number two, <clears throat> the principle of correspondence. And you know this commonly in your metaphysical and, and spiritual instruction as, as above, so below, and as below, so above, etc. And this is symbolized by the uh, Egyptian symbol of hex alpha, which you see the pyramid up and the pyramid down in balance, and is also sometimes referred to as Suleiman's shield or hex alpha, etc. And so the principle of correspondence, and this principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. The old hermetic axiom ran in these words, as above, so below, as below, so above. And the grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving many dark paradoxes and hidden secrets of nature. And there are planes beyond our knowing, but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknowable to us. And this principle is of universal application and manifestation on the various planes of the material, mental, and spiritual universe. It is a universal law. And the ancient Hermetists considered this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which man was able to pry aside the obstacles which hid from view the unknown. Its use even tore aside the veil of Isis to the extent that a glimpse of the face of the goddess might be caught, just as a knowledge of the principles of geometry enables man to measure distance, distant suns and their movements while seated in his observat uh, observatory. So a knowledge of the principle of correspondence enables man to reason intelligently from the known to the unknown, studying the monad um, be understands or he understands the archangel. Number three, the principle of vibration. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. Now this principle embodies the truth that everything is in motion. Everything vibrates, nothing is at rest. Facts which modern science endorses and which each new scientific discover, uh, discovery tends to verify. And yet this hermetic principle was enunciated thousands of years ago by the masters of ancient Hikupta, i.e. Egypt. The principle explains that the differences between different manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit result largely from varying rates of vibration, from the all, which is pure spirit, down to the grossest form of matter all in the vibration, the higher the vibration, the higher the position of the scale. The vibration of the spirit is at such an infinite rate of intensity and rapidity that it is practically at rest, just as a rapidly moving wheel seems to be motionless. And at the other end of the scale, there are gross matter gross forms of matter whose vibrations are so low as to seem at rest. Between those poles or these poles, there are millions upon millions of variable and varying degrees of vibration. From the uh, corpuscle and electron atom and molecule to worlds and universes, everything is in vibration or vibratory motion. And this is also true on the planes of energy and force, which are but varying degrees of vibration. And also on the mental planes whose states depend upon vibrations 
and even on the spiritual planes, an understanding of this principle with the appropriate formulas enables hermetists uh, students to control their own mental vibrations as well as those of others. And the masters who apply this principle to the conquering of natural phenomena in various ways, he who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the scepter of power, says one of the old writers of ancient he kept up. Now, um, third, uh, the fourth principle is the principle of polarity. And in the principle, with the principle of polarity, everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. The extremes meet. All truths are but half truths, and all paradoxes may be reconciled. Now, this principle of polarity embodies the truth that everything is dual. Everything has two poles. Everything has its pairs of opposites, all of which were old hermetic axioms. It explains the old paradoxes that have perplexed, perplexed so many, which have been stated as follows. Thesis and antithesis are identical in nature, but different in degree. Opposites are the same, differing only in degree. The pairs of opposites may be reconciled. Extremes meet. Everything is and isn't at the same time. All truths mm -hmm. are but half truths. Every truth is half false, and there are two sides of everything, etc., etc., etc. It explains that in everything there are two poles or opposite aspects, and that opposites, quote unquote, are really only the two extremes of the same thing, which many varying degrees between, with many varying degrees between them. And the, the uh, pardon me, to illustrate this, uh, heat and cold as an example, although opposites are really the same thing, the difference is consisting merely of degrees of the same thing. And look at your thermometer and see if you can discover where heat terminates and cold begins. There's no such thing as absolute heat or absolute cold. The two terms, heat and cold, simply indicate varying degrees of the same thing. And that same thing, which manifests as heat and cold, is merely a form, a variety, and rate of vibration. So heat and cold are simply the two poles of that which we call heat. And the phenomena attendant of thereupon are manifestations of the principle of polarity. And the same principle manifests in the case of light and darkness, which are the same thing. The difference uh, consisting of varying degrees between the two poles of the phenomena, which does, where does darkness leave off and light begin? What is the difference between large and small, between hard and soft, between black and white, between sharp and dull, between noise and quiet, between high and low, between positive and negative. The principle of polarity explains these paradoxes and no other principle can supersede it. And the same principle operates in the mental plane. And let us take a radical and extreme example, that of love and hate two mental states apparently totally different, and yet there are degrees of hate and degrees of love, and a middle point in which we use the term like or dislike, which shade into each other so gradually that sometimes we are at a loss to know whether we like or dislike or either or neither. And all are simply degrees of the same thing, as you will see if you will uh, but think for a moment. And more than this, and considered of more importance by the hermeticists, um, it is uh, possible to change the vibration of hate to the vibration of love in one's own mind and in the mind of others. And many of you who read these lines 
have personal experiences of the involuntary rapid transition from love to hate and the reverse in your own case and that of others. And you will therefore realize the possibility of this being accomplished by the use of the will, quote unquote, the will, by means of the hermetic formulas. Good and evil are but the poles of the same thing, and the hermetist understands the art of transmuting evil into good by means of an application of the principle of polarity. And in short, the art of polarization becomes a phase of mental alchemy known and practiced by the ancient and modern hermetic masters. An understanding of the principle, or of this principle, um, matters, pardon me. Um, so an understanding of this principle will enable one to change his own polarity. So this is where you apply this knowledge to change your own mood, your thoughts, your patterns, or even what you would deal with, what is often referred to as self-baptism or cleansing, etc. cetera. Uh, understand as polarity. And as well as that of others, if he or she will devote the time and the study necessary to master the art. Number five, the principle of rhythm. Everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum owing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. Now this principle embodies the truth that in everything there is a manifested and a measured motion to and fro, a flow and inflow, a swing backwards and forward, a pendulum-like movement, a tide-like ebb and flow, a high tide and low tide between the two poles which exist in accordance with the principles of polarity described as, or described a moment ago as we talked about earlier. Now, there are always an action and a reaction, an advance and a retreat, a rising and a sinking. And this is in the affairs of the universe, in the affairs of suns, of worlds, of men, of animals, of mind, of energy, and of matter. Now, this law is manifest in the creation and destruction of worlds, in the rise and fall of nations, in the life of all things, and finally in the mental states of man. And it is with this matter that the hermetis, hermeticists uh, find the understanding of the principle most important, or of this principle most important. The hermetists um, have grasped um, this principle, who have grasped this principle, finding its universal application, have also discovered certain means to overcome its effects in themselves, and by the use of the appropriate formulas and methods, they apply the mental law of neutralization. And they cannot annul the principle nor cause it to cease its operation but they have learned how to escape its effect upon themselves to a certain degree, depending upon the mastery of the principle. And they have learned how to use it instead of being used by it. In this and in the similar methods consist of the art of the hermetists. Now masters of, of hermetics polarizes himself or herself at this point in which he or she desires to rest and then neutralizes the rhythmic swing of the pendulum, which would tend to carry him to the other pole. All individuals who have attained any self degree or degree of self mastery do this to a certain degree, more or less unconsciously, but the master does this consciously and by the use of his or her will and attains a degree of poise and mental firmness almost impossible of belief on the part of the masses who are swung backwards and forward like a pendulum. And this principle 
and that of polarity have been closely studied by the hermetists and the methods of counter or uh, counteracting or neutralizing and using them um, for an important or, or their form or using them for uh, an important part of hermetic mental alchemy. Six, the principle of cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes this law. Now, this principle, the principle of cause and effect, embodies the fact that there is a cause for every effect, an effect from every cause. It explains that everything happens according to law, that nothing ever merely happens, that there is no such thing as chance. And while there are various planes of cause and effect, the higher dominating the lower planes, still nothing of or, or ever entirely escapes the law. The Hermitists understand the art and methods of rising above the ordinary plane of cause and effect and to, to a certain degree, and by mentally rising to a higher plane, they become causers instead of effect. The masses of people are carried along, obedient to environment, the wills and the desires of others stronger than themselves. Heredity, uh, suggestion and other outward cause moving them about their pawn as or like pawns on the chessboard of life. But the masters rising to the plane of above dominates their moods, characters, qualities, and powers, as well as the environment surrounding them, and become movers instead of pawns. And they help to play the game of life instead of being played and moved about by others' wills and environment. They use the principle instead of being tools. The masters obey the causation of the higher planes, but they help to rule on their own plane. And this statement there is condensed a wealth of hermetic knowledge and let him read who can. Number seven, the principle of gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests at all planes. Now the principle of gender, this principle embodies the truth that there is gender manifested in everything, the masculine and the feminine principles ever at work. And this is true not only of the physical plane, but of the mental plane and even the spiritual planes. And on the physical plane, the, this principle manifests as sex. On a higher plane, it, uh, it takes higher forms, but the principle is ever the same. No creation, physical, mental, or spiritual, is possible without this principle. An understanding of the, its laws will throw light on many a subject and has, that has perplexed the minds of men. The principle of gender works ever in the direction of generation, regeneration, and creation. Everything and every person contains the two elements or principles, or this great principle within it, him or her. And every male or every male thing has the female element also, and every female contains also the male principle. And if you would understand the philosophy of mental and spiritual creation, generation and regeneration, you must understand and study this hermetic principle. It contains the solution to many mysteries of life. And we caution you that this principle has no reference to the many base, pernicious, and degrading lustful theories, teachings, and practices which are taught under fanciful titles, and which are a proposition or a prostitution of the great natural principles of gender. And such base revivals of the ancient infamous forms of, of phallicism tend to ruin mind, body, and soul. And the Hermitess of uh, philosophy has ever sounded the warning against these degraded teachings 
which tend toward lust, licentiousness, and perversion of nature's principles. And if you seek such teachings, you must go elsewhere for them. Hermit or hermeticism contains nothing for you along those lines. To the pure, all things are pure. To the base, all things are base. Now we share with you those um, seven principles or hermetic principles to give you a uh, foundation, truthfully, of the laws of nature and nature's God, because that's exactly what it is. However, uh, in order to look at uh, the politics uh, or the interactions of human society at Midgard, and of course, many of the problems that we have, it is also important to, for those of you who are uh, in forms of scholarship and philosophy and in linguistic um, communications, et cetera, to be always cognizant of the seven hermetic laws or seven principles. Therefore, you must have a knowledge of the laws of nature in order to understand the true foundations of what you would call orderly or de jure government distinguished from de facto or what you would call the base activities of men in their uh, lower self, etc. And also with the knowledge of this, you would have a better comprehension and, and a method for analyzing the higher self and the lower self in more science and more philosophy. Um, based on principles unmoving, unchanging, for they are the principles of the phenomena of the universe, etc. So I repeat again, and we will cons uh, consider one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, the principle of mentalism. Two, the principle of correspondence. Three, the principle of vibration. Four, the principle of polarity. Five, the principle of rhythm. Six, the principle of cause and effect. Seven, the principle of gender. Now that is fundamentally the foundation of all those who know um, fundamental civilization on earth, et cetera. So if you're talking about or researching ancient uh, Mesopotamia, ancient Eritrea, ancient Egypt, ancient Sudan, ancient Nubia, uh, ancient Hikupta, ancient Egypt, etc., uh, ancient Greece. So when you talk in Greece, you're still talking Ethiopia. So um, do not be mixed with the uh, diversionary um, reconstructed history as taught to people. So when you're talking so-called Greek, you're talking still ancient Ethiopia, etc. The philosophy is one. And when you um, look at the, um, the variables and the flavors uh, of the way they have been taught as you have uh, transliterations into different linguistic forms, uh, sometimes people are under the impression that the fundamental rules or the laws change and the laws actually don't change nor pass away. They remain the same. And so it is important for you to have a knowledge of the hermetic laws in order to understand constitutional construction and civilized government, also the constitutional construction in all true religious, cosmological, religious orders of the ancient world and also coming down to the modern or the contemporary world. Um, and most of your contamination has been uh, by virtue of less than honorable men who have uh, pretty much tried to debase the fundamental knowledge for selfish gain. And of course, this is, uh, again, the motivation for why a lot of the activity for human liberation that's taking place right now on the planet Midgard. Um, and um, of particular interest, logically, is the Morris Dubon and National Movement of the World uh, covering the um, grand efforts in a general manner for the uplifting of fallen humanity, et cetera. And so we're going to talk about a lot of the negative activities that's taking place at the North Gate because this is at the hub of, of both the knowledge um, although the, work, the knowledge is worldwide, uh, much of the um, negative activity that's, that's taken place on, at Midgard has been initiated um, from around the world, but this uh, uh, North, North, the North Gate is uh, one of the major, what you call geographical locations from which the uh, dark priesthood have, have been operating 
to create misery on the planet for selfish gain, etc. And so this is where we come into uh, discussing the negative activities at the North Gate. And keep in mind, one of the keys to um, the corrupt operatives who have been doing business at the Maghreb or at the, um, the West or at the North Gate are very well aware of these principles. This is another reason why we present in a synopsis or share the, uh, a synopsis of those principles to you all. And uh, while, we, while we're aware that many of you have all already been uh, pretty much spiritually grounded in this knowledge, we also know that many have not been. And this is so that um, we can all start working together and more harmonically in solving or bringing some remedy or balance to the um, uh, inter-social, political, and economic operations at Midgard as transitions are being made on the planet, et cetera. And as many of you already know, many of the obstacles that have been in place at Midgard for quite some time, some of them have been removed. Um, uh, some uh, beings in their physical form, some and some of the institutions that have been grounded, very uh, entrenched pretty much so, are actually being dissolved. And of course, because we're creatures of habit, this becomes very uncomfortable for all of us because we've been groomed into uh, many false paradigms and we've built our lives around many false paradigms and many false concepts, etc. And so this cleansing or this baptism, as you might call it, or rebalancing of the vibrations, etc., cetera, um, while in fact both um, necessary and also harmonic with the operations of nature in the Aquarian energy, logically still is uncomfortable for many people. So we, uh, some of the things that we've been discussing over the years with you uh, concerning uh, those matters, keep in mind one of the things that we are, are, are desiring for you to do is start taking control of yourself. And, and, and um, Dr. Nayelo has been doing, um, as many of you who, who've been following some of her um, walks when, you know, I say going for a ride with Dr. G has hit on a lot of these things. Um, and this will give you more of a grounding uh, on how to handle that information without emotionalism or without um, looking at it as just mere opinion because she's she deals with those principles for years, etc. And so it's only fair that we share some of them with you all so that you can better uh, help us and we help you and we help each other in making this uh, planet a better place while we're going through this transition. Richie, um, <clears throat> I may, may I interject. Hmm. <clears throat> we, uh, one of the things that prompted this particular topic is the fact that on November 2nd mm -hmm. of 2020, um, President uh, Donald Trump yes. issued an executive order. Yeah, I'm going to bring that up on a computer too. Yeah, um, 13958. Yeah. In the very, yeah. So I did put that in the the link for it in the in the uh, chat so i'm not sure if, if people caught on what so that they could actually pull it up yeah but um the ramifications so to speak on this i'm not even sure you know I, since we're in a transition period one of we the things we're in, we're in transition so it, it could very well be that other executive orders could follow from the new administration that could it could counter well, the, the new administration is really the activity and not the person a uh, personage you know uh now uh many of you know that um i told you before that donald trump is assigned and i understand what you're seeing in the mainstream news etc but i stand on what i said i what they what I know what they're saying to people, and I'm not saying trust me. I'm standing on what I said, and I don't change. Okay. You know. Um. Now, uh, it's executive order. Okay. Do, do you want me to read some of it, or you want to read it? Executive order. I have it up. Thirteen nine five eight.
-hmm. Now, of course, we already know that that's the advisory. Many of you who, who know about the advisory committee, um, uh, and, and notice that they talk about the 1776 mm -hmm. advisory uh, or committee commission. Now, um, before we get into this, I want to, to, for you all to be reminded for background research, you know, because a lot of things that are uh, maybe touched on here and there, and some things that we've touched on actually previously, uh, we won't be able to necessarily go over uh, tonight uh, necessarily, um, but we're depending on many of you who have been you know, walking with us for the last 11, 12 years here at the House of Reawakening Minds. And those of you who have, who have yourselves um, uh, taken the responsibility of doing research and scholarship in the matters of our people here at North America, and of course, of the positive and negative operations that have um, both injured and distracted the people, etc. cetera, um, we remind you in relationship to the politics that's been happening on our land um, in um, the recent century, um, to always uh, make reference to your knowledgeable background of the Organic Act of Congress of 1871, February the 2nd. It's important because these things must be put in perspective. Because I think a lot of times when people are looking at the politics, uh, we actually um, approach it from a pigeonhole type mentality based on mainstream communications, uh, which is for the most part uh, for mind control, et cetera. And understand from um, hermetic re recognition of cause and effect that certain things which are said um, or, or, or pre presented to the masses for mind control purposes, when you look at it from a more spiritual or hermetic point of view, you already know that even though they may tell you one thing, that the mathematics of the universe will disallow certain things. And this is again why certain things are said for those who have eyes to see that in spite of what it may appear to the masses, you stand on certain principles irregardless because the truth don't change or pass away. But anyway, let's look at the executive order 113958. And this order establishing the president's advisory uh, of 70, 1776 commission you mean the 13958 are different? Mm, 13, pardon me. 13, yeah. I apologize. 13958 executive order. So we call it 13958. So by the authority vested in me, this is this is in reference to the president uh, for the corporation. And at this time, it must be understood. So I want to present this to everyone while we're reading this so that you stay very clear. Presidents are the CEO or the heads of corporations. Nation states have prime ministers, so keep that in mind. So understand also the de facto operations that have been taking place on the land since 1871, actually 1861. And we, we redundantly would remind you of these things. And I think a lot of times when we do that, when we're going into different subject matters, and people recognize the redundancy of it all. Those who see know it's necessary because we know that most of the time when we mention these things to the people, most of the time they, they're not really paying attention to what we're saying because they're not looking at things from multiple levels at the same time. But nevertheless, we're reminding you that we have reminded you of that constantly. So by the authority vested in me as president by the constitution, and the laws of the United States of America, and in order to better and enable a rising generation to understand the history and principles of the founding of the United States in 1776, and through this form a more perfect union, it is hereby ordered as follows. Section one, purpose. The American founding envisioned a political order 
in harmony with the design of the laws of nature and of nature's God, seeing the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as embodied in and sanctioned by the natural law and its traditions. The formation of a republic around these principles marked a clear departure from previous forms of government, securing rights to a form of government that derives its legitimate power from the consent of the governed. Throughout its national life, our republic's exploration of the full meaning of these principles has led it through the ratification of a constitution, civil war, the abolition of slavery, reconstruction, and a series of domestic crises and world conflicts. These events established a clear historical record of an exceptional nation dedicated to the ideas and ideals of its founding. Against this history in recent years, a series of polemics grounded in poor scholarship has vilified our founders and our founding. Despite the vir vir uh, virtues and accomplishments of this nation, many students are now taught in school to hate their own country and to believe that the men and women who built it were not heroes, but rather villains. And this radicalized view of American history lacks perspective, obscures virtues, twists motives, ignores or distorts facts, and magnifies flaws, resulting in the truth being concealed and history disfigured. Failing to identify, challenge, and correct this distorted perspective could fray and ultimately erase the bonds that knit our country and culture together. The recent attacks on our founding have highlighted America's history related to race. And these one-sided and diverse accounts too often ignore or fail to properly honor and recollect the great legacy of the American national experience. Our country's valiant and successful effort to shake off the curse of slavery and to use the lessons of that struggle to guide our work toward equal rights for all citizens in the present. And viewing America as a irredeemably and systematically racist country cannot account for the extraordinary role of the great heroes of the American movement against slavery and for civil rights, a great moral endeavor that Abraham Lincoln to Martin Luther King Jr. was marked by religious fellowship, goodwill, generosity of heart, and emphasis on our shared principles and an exclusive vision for the future. As these heroes demonstrated, the path to a renewed and confident national unity is through a rediscovery of a shared identity rooted in our founding principles. A loss of national confidence in these principles would place rising generations in jeopardy of a crippling self-doubt that could cause them to abandon faith in the common story that binds us to one another across our differences. Without our common faith in the equal right of every individual American to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, authoritarian visions of government and society could become increasingly alluring alternatives to self-government based on the consent of the people. And thus it is necessary to provide America's youth or young people across what is genuinely inspiring and unifying in our history, as well as the lessons imparted by the American experience of overcoming great national challenges. And this is what makes possible the informed and honest patriotism that is essential for a successful republic. A restoration of American education grounded in the principles of our founding that is accurate honest, unifying, inspiring, and ennobling must ultimately succeed at the local level. Parents and local school boards must be empowered to achieve greater choice and variety in curriculum at the state and local levels. 
The role of the federal government is to protect and preserve state and local control over the curriculum program of instruction, administration, and personnel of educational institutions, schools, and school systems. Instead, that is why my administration rejects the common core curriculum of all efforts to have the federal government impose a national curriculum or national standards in education. Vigorous participation in local government has always been America's laboratory of liberty and a key to what makes us exceptional. And the best way to preserve the story of America's founding principles is to live in its action by local community, uh, communities reasserting control of how children receive patriotic education in their schools. Section two, the President's Advisory 1776 Commission. A, within 120 days of the date of this order, the Secretary of Education shall establish in the Department of Education, the President's Advisory 1776 Commission, the 1776 Commission, quote unquote, to better enable a rising generation to understand the history and principles of the founding of the United States in 1776 and to strive to form a more perfect union. B, the 1776 commission shall be composed of not more than 20 members who shall be appointed by the president. Members shall serve for a term of two years and shall not be removed except for inefficiency, neglect of duty, or malfeasance. The 1776 Commission may include individuals from outside the federal government with relevant experience or subject matter expertise. The 1776 Commission shall also include the following ex officio members or such senior officials as those members may designate. I or one, Secretary of State, two, Secretary of Defense, three, Secretary of, Inter of the Interior, four, the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, five, the Secretary of Education, six, the Assistant to the President for Domestic Policy, and seven, the Assistant to the President for Intergovernmental Affairs. C, the 1776 Commission shall, one, pro uh, produce a report for the President within one year of the date of this order, which shall be publicly disseminated regarding the core principles of the American founding and how these principles may be understood to further uh, uh, enjoyment of the blessings of liberty, quote unquote, and to promote our striving to form a more perfect union, quote unquote. The commission may solicit statements and contributions from intellectual and cultural figures in addition to the views of the commission members. Two, advise and offer recommendations to the president and the United States uh, semi quincentential commission regarding the federal government's plan to celebrate the 250th anniversary of American independence and coordinate, coordinate with relevant external stakeholders on their plans. Three, Facilitate the development and implementation of a quote unquote presidential 1776 award to recognize student knowledge of the American founding, including knowledge about the founders, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitutional Convention, and the great soldiers and battles of the American Revolutionary War. Four, advise executive departments and agencies, agency quote unquote, that's emphasized with regard to their efforts to ensure patriotic education, meaning the presentation of the history of the American founding and fundamental or foundational, pardon me, principles. The examination of how the United States has grown closer to those principles throughout its history and the explanation of why commitment to America's aspirations is beneficial and justified is provided to the public at national parks, battlefields, monuments, museums, installations, landmarks, cemeteries, and other places important to the American Revolution and the American founding as appropriate and consistent with applicable law. Five, advise agencies and prioritizing the American founding and federal grants and initiatives, including those described in section four of this order, 
and as appropriate and consistent with the application or applicable law, and six, facilitate, advise upon, and promote other activities to support public knowledge and patriarchic education um, on the American Revolution and the American founding as appropriate and consistent with applicable law. D, the 1776 commission shall have a chair and vice chair designated by the president from among its members, an executive director designated by the secretary of education in consultation with the assistant of the president for domestic policy shall coordinate the work of the 1776 commission. And the chair and the vice chair shall work with the executive director to convene regular meetings of the 1776 commission, determine its agenda and direct its work consistent with this order. E, the Department of Education shall provide funding and administrative support for the 1776 commission to the extent permitted by law and subject to the availability of appropriations. F, members of the 1776 commission shall serve without compensation, but shall be reimbursed for travel expenses, including per diem in lieu of subsidence as authorized by law for persons serving intermittently in government service, 5 USC 5701-5707. G, insofar as the Federal Advisory Committee Act as amended at 5 USC uh, ap uh, applied, may um, apply to the 1776 Commission and any functions of the president under that act, except that of reporting to the Congress, shall be performed by the Secretary of Education in accordance with the guidelines issued by the Administrator of General Services. H, the 1776 Commission shall terminate two years from the date of this order unless extended by the president. Section three, celebration of Constitution Day. All relevant agencies shall monitor compliance with Title I of Division J of the Public Law 108-447, which provides that each educational institution that receives federal funds from a fiscal year shall hold an educational program on the United States Constitution on September 17th of such year for the students served by the education institution, including by verifying compliance with each educational institution that receives federal funds. All relevant agencies shall take action as appropriate to enhance compliance with that law. Section four, prioritize the American founding in available federal resources. The following agencies shall prioritize federal resources consistent with applicable law to promote patriotic education. A, the Department of Education through the American History and Civics, Academics and American History and Civics uh, Education National Activities. B, the Department of Defense through the Pilot Program on Enhanced Civics Education and C, the Department of State through the Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs and through opportunities in the Fulbright U.S. Speakers and International Visitors Leadership Programs, as well as in American spaces. Section five, general provisions. A, nothing in this order shall be construed to impair or otherwise affect, one, the authority granted by the law to the, an executive department or agency or the head thereof, or to the functions of the director of the office of management and budget relating to uh, budgetary, budgetary, administrative, or legislative proposals. B, and this order shall be implemented consistent with the applicable law and subject to the availability of appropriations. C, this order is not intended to and does not create any right or benefit, substantive or procedural, enforceable at law, or in equity by any party against the United States and its departments, agencies, and entities, its officers, employees, or agents, or other persons, 
or any other person, pardon me. The White House, November 2, 2020. FR document 2020, 24793 filed 11 4 2020 at 11:15 a.m. publication date on uh, November 5, 2020. Those of you, I think uh, uh, Dr. Naila shared this with you all. She posted it so that you can, I think it's in your inbox, right? No, I posted the link in the uh, chat at the, at the beginning. All right, in the chat room, yeah. So that the link. So the question is, you know, what does all that? Now, as you can see, as you can see, uh, uh, one of the things, now I'm looking at this and then I'm going back to um, some things that I said. And I told you that he's assigned. Yes. This is an indication of that. Now I could break this down and of course you can too. And I could find structural flaws, many, many. But I know that this is presented uh, synoptically for what people can generally comprehend. But I, I also see that, that that he's open for advisory and that is structured for that and the commission in its nature. Um, and notice, I want everyone to notice how Donald Trump constantly refers to the republic and you will see him not talk about the democracy whatsoever mm -hmm. in here. Um, that's indicative, that's an indicative uh, uh, sign of his assignment. Um, so uh, what this indicates, and the other thing that I, 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 would, I would have you look at, Dr. Naila, is notice the emphasis that's put on civics and then uh, making reference to the problems that we, we have in, in relationship to both civil rights, slavery, et cetera, the positives and the negatives as we go along, and, and it's clearly that he's addressing that, et cetera. And of course, you already know over the years, um, we've had a lot of opposition from people who should have been teaching civics, who have been criticizing us and knocking us for teaching civics. Um, um, also constitutional enforcement, because in, in order to enforce the constitution, you gotta enforce the treaties. And of course, in order for people to, to understand the structure uh, of the operations of America, you gotta really teach civics and you gotta know the history of the founding fathers. You got to know the history of the Constitution, how it evolved. You got to understand that the United States began for them in 1776. You know, it's not the nation um, of occupation, it's the nation of political operation. At, at 1776 was when that was established. Yes, yes. So, um, and this is back to even people having a clear understanding, making a distinction between corporate operations and the organic land. In other words, this land and America didn't begin in 1776. And this is also back to having a, a, a clear understanding that America is not a country. And, and without that clarity, people have been mixing that because you gotta keep in mind because of the political agendas of the corruption of the politics, uh, it's hard for people to, ever make those discernments because they've been trained in linguistic form to keep looking or saying America, America, America as a country. Um, and also uh, when it comes to uh, talking about rights, you know, are people talking about rights? Are you saying America or United States? Now, that, that's back to the point. Right. They must understand they're distinctly different. Right, right. So the United States is not the country. It is. It, exactly. So, you know. Because a lot of times some people may say, well, well, where do you, you know, we, we know, we know, we, we know we live in our body, but they might say, where do you live? I live in the United States. And they're already primed. See, right. That's and that's the, the corporation. Training. I live in the corporate fiction. Yes. And what they they're have saying. been abusing the people. And this is back to um, why uh, constitutional principles and what we taught. And he's saying that. And he's literally setting up a commission. Now, look at the look and consider. What would make that necessary except an acknowledgement that this thing has gone totally south, that this whole platform is, has failed or it's and it's it's failing. If you if you even see the nature, the nature of this conversation in this executive order, it is with the recognition 
that the institutional foundations upon uh, the people have been dependent in the name of government has actually not only failed them, but is clearly not understood and also clearly been misrepresented. And when you look here, um, he's not making such a, an effort to explain every detail, but he's laying the foundation where those details may now be taught and even in the school systems and emphasizing um, um, platforms in all of departments um, to be uh, in support of constructively uh, of those ends. Uh, and of course, you already know um, for these years uh, through the round table and uh, through um, Great Seal and other operations, this is the fundamental uh, at the root, although we've made it more refined of what we've been promoting for the last 25, 30 years among the people recognizing this necessity. Um, and of course, with a lot of um, of the hybrid Europeans who are who are U.S. citizens, having been uh, abused by the politicians themselves, have been uh, in many of their organizations trying to uh, expose the the uh, true history of the contemporary world um, to some degree, um, because the middle class has been pretty much uh, devoured and destroyed, etc. However, it is also have been our responsibility being Aboriginal people of the land to get back in order ourselves in harmony with the constitution and treaty principles, et cetera, because we've been out of order uh, by virtue of that miseducation. And of course, uh, with the lack of knowledge on, many, on the part of many uh, false expectations have been promoted in the name of agencies and in the name of um, organizations, et cetera, that has actually complicated everything and caused much din and much destruction. Uh, in order to save, or what you would call any kind of organized government legitimacy of mm -hmm. government, even so, um, you can see, for those who really understand history and civics, the necessity of what he's done. And um, uh, in comparison to uh, most of the praetors of recent generations, you know, uh, this is extraordinary. This is actually extraordinary. And I don't say that with compliment to him necessarily in that sense of word, but um, I'll say that to the point of it's a clear recognition that uh, Donald Trump recognized if they don't fix this thing, it's over for them. Now, um, and it's over for it's, it's it's over for the order as it is. Uh, the, the, the real problem. What order are you is, talking about? The United States Corporation. You know, um, well, one thing is absolutely for sure. It's over for them the mis the uh, misrepresentation as a nation. Now that's a fact. Um, however. Uh, there's a sense of appeal within this, you know, for the Aboriginal people, actually, those who know, you know, to take our responsibility on our part, you know, to aid in bringing harmonics back. Uh, the ignorance on, 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 our, on the part of our people is, is, is so deeply extreme, you know. Um, and the uh, the lack of faith in all of their institutions is is really so low to 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 none, which is implied in here. And he already knows that one thing that you cannot do with humans is govern a people who have no faith in the system. I don't care what you do, you know. I, I if I might interject, I I see a nation largely of us, and when I say a nation, I'm talking about a lot of, you know, melanated wars who actually do have faith in the system, that they do have blind faith yeah. in the system, and they believe that they've done something that's going to make their lives better, and I only, I just shudder to think what they will feel 
when they find out what what they've actually gone into this is this you is, know i mean because most of those not most of us, those of us who know we're already prepared for the other shoe to drop mm -hmm. while, while everybody else is expecting for you know masks to come off mm -hmm. and stuff to go away and mm -hmm. this to get better and that it's not things are not going to come back things are this was planned in order to um put a stranglehold on and begin to kill and choke and get rid this of things is, that um, they have no more use for you can it's it's multiple levels because it's it, it's also what you would call the social distance distancing is um both by necessity and by default social crashing um and this is why we got to kind of think a little bit beyond this and you know some of this, what we were talking about earlier uh when we we're coming actually coming down here and um it is good and it's bad at the same time right um so when you look at this more or less metaphysically um even from the point of view of those who have been operating on the dark side if you really look at it and kind of kind of remove your emotions from it that some of this negative is necessary because uh it's an indicator if you look at the, the rule of correspondence and a uh, rule of cause and effect uh and this is why, you know, like for the last seven or so years, we were telling people a lot of things that we do today, even like when we, we've been doing, you know, nationalizing people and stuff like that. And we would tell them, understand these things is for you to study, but understand a lot of things we're doing today, you will not be doing later, mm -hmm. but this is a necessary learning curve. Right. Cause what's, what's really, if you really look at the under part of the underlying spirit, here because it's not all there but if you have any what you call vibratory insight you can see it mm -hmm. it's an acknowledgement that the institutions have failed they're not coming back right you know and so our education systems the education system that have been imposed upon us were inadequate as they were but they were inadequate by design for the last paradigm right of the economic system, which was actually designed in servitude, all right, and in bottom rate instruments. The the and this is back to what we talked about the force du jour. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not working for them anymore either. See, and so it's not just um an issue of a desire to make things better for humanity. It's not even in the interest of those who created the false paradigm. It's no longer a benefit to them. Problem. This is um, the people not knowing the devious nature, the devious nature of persons they 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 have been trained to to uh, look up or look at as their government, which really wasn't. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? There's their their training. And our life styles are built around support systems and support systems of support systems, including the jobs. Um, and they're not going to say to you, you're not going back to work into most of these industries, be not because of this virus. They're saying the, vi the virus is a cover. Let's, let's, get, let's get that out the way. Uh, it is sort of like um, you're dealing with what they're not saying directly, but I'm saying what it is, what we've been telling people for years. A lot of this exercise is for us because we're getting ready to be bumped, bumped or tagged. You can kind of look at it like tag a little bit or um, imprinted in some ways. Um, we're going to make generational jumps in technology the technologies that have been artificially preserved for purpose for purpose mm -hmm. 
um, that is no longer functional. Um, to give um, to give some kind of a, a a little bit of support to what I'm saying. Kind of look at it like um, kind of look at it like a bunch of. Remember we talked about. Uh, I think last week we talked about um how many uh like uh, many of the young uh, uh, women now they don't have they can intellectually you can tell them but they don't intellectually have the experience of like say when they made a phone call of going even in recent decades back we're not talking about now um going to a business and seeing a whole room of secretaries before you reach right. uh, a vice cool. president before you even talk to a president of, of the average corporation operating mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. or like if you made a phone call and um, you would uh, uh, put a, a, a dime in a, 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 a phone booth on the corner and wait for this, uh, wait for the operator to answer, and then it, you got to tell them the number, mm -hmm. and then they would hook you up and stuff like that, and and mm -hmm. you would uh, go say. Like as an example, when I was in in Jersey area, when I was little, I remember going on Hatton Avenue, and you go to this place where they were working, and you see all these women, you know, that was going to school for to be secretaries and going phone operators, and now, and and the same way that they're not, you're not going back to that. Yeah, is the same way you're not going back to what you think you're used to now that you're looking at as advanced. So what you what we're really saying, what you're really saying is that even when that was taking place, it didn't have to because the technology that was more advanced already even existed. Even now, even now, existed prior, and prior to, to that. Yes, right. So even prior to prior that. to that. So and these are just like things to do while we play with the with keeping them. us busy busy work when right. actually humanity was being deliberately retarded pardon me and i know um and i think a lot of times with people who who are a little psychic or people who have what you call walking experience mm -hmm. find it kind of difficult here mm -hmm. when they're um trying to live here uh, when you know and you don't vest in it because you already know it's dead and people don't understand that if they relate to you right. because you're here. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And you can tell them, but you can't tell them at the same time. But even then what they're coming to, you already know that we're going to jump past that too real quick. A lot of this, what hap what's really happening in some ways, even what they're being introduced to, Uh, some of the people that are going to introduce them to some of the technologies, they're not going to introduce. This is what's. Let me come at it. Can we come at it again? All right. The liabilities are so great for a lot of people that has held us back. That are even going to help try to jump things. Whatever their motives are, because they're being pressured. Some because they've decided to come on the other side. Um, and others, um, they're trying to maintain their power grip that they're definitely going to lose. You know, like we talk about the changing of the guards, changing of the gods. Mm -hmm. um, so all the paradigm, the God paradigms that people have been dealing with is dead. You know, um, Prepare, prepare people to handle that when actually that's a small part. It, it's big in the minds of so many people, but those who know, that's kind of like grade school. But it's because people have been built into that paradigm for so many generations, it's big in their mind. It's above them when actually it's beneath them. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. You know, meanwhile, the technology necessitated um, for their evolution. Um, one thing they're going to do is give the technology instrumentality in some, in many instances, 
without the knowledge of the technology itself. This is what some of them are planning. I mean, if you look at them, if you go up and look at them, um, you know, a lot of them try to hide those thoughts. But if you know, you can see like through them because it's, it's like transparent. It's sort of like, um, like cellophane in a way. Um, you know, like inter as an example, introducing this or introducing this, and this changes the whole paradigm of the platform of the way we be living, mm -hmm. but will not expose to you the technology behind it, but you will be giving the package of, uh, of, of the product. This is intentional. Now I'm not gonna argue about the fairness of the fair or the lack of fairness of it, but I'm gonna say this. Um, you still have a lot of selfish masters who really, uh, even though they, they're cooperating, cooperating uh, in their heart of hearts, didn't want humanity to evolve, but they, they're, they're like kind of moved out of the way and those who want to kind of survive here are going along with it, not necessarily because their hearts are full in the honor of it. You know, however, um, some of them, some, not them, some of the, some, some of, of us, um, in the governed, governed level of operation, um, have the mental capacity to see through some of this. So we're we're dealing with um, certain protections being put in place for those who are still trying to jump humanity a little bit more, because in spite of the technology being suppressed, some of them will have the vibr vibratory seeing ability to go beyond and, and analyze it and pull out more. However, they're also going to set up the systems, the economic systems in such a way, whereas individuals cannot exploit like they did in this past, in this past Piscean energy, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know, I didn't think past too, too much of it. I didn't look, I didn't look too far beyond that, really. Um, um, whether they fear um, that the people will come and, 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 and do stuff to them for having done this to us, which is part of the paradigm, too. Um, and uh, also to control that no one gets monopoly in areas the way they did in this in this past Piscean energy. You know, of course, then there's this moral, then the moral aspects, the cause and effectual uh, responses of the moral aspect of it all. Um, so those dynamics are actually being considered right now around the world. They're going, they're, they've been, They've been meeting longer than people think they have. I've seen some things where world groups are doing that kind of think tank sort of mm -hmm. how we're going to change everything. And uh, it, it does affect us here. Yeah. It, it will affect us here. Um, the the thing that I guess that that gets me um, what I've been experiencing is kind of interesting, like almost everything that I've been doing lately mm -hmm. um, has dealt with. Um, bio type and energy and and, and vibration. You know, our vibration and, and which we know we know that everything is not only mind but energy and so i've been getting a lot of technology and involved with a lot of things that are so simplistic from the standpoint of you know we they introduced us to things like the cloud and we didn't think about we didn't well some people may have figured how does my picture go from my cell phone mm -hmm. to your cell phone mm -hmm. and the other you know in another place another side of the world yeah like that how does what i have here um mm -hmm. stay where it is yet materialize mm -hmm. in another place mm -hmm. now it's almost like beam me up scotty type you know yeah. we now, saw these things. what you're seeing is still is um because the, the words don't really qualify the way people think it does Mm -hmm. But that is time travel, and it's happening with the. You know what I'm just saying? It, but but 
Now, what the, what I I think that some of their concerns were um, for those who are highly intuitive to go beyond that to 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 look at that what they already have and recognize that a lot of the technologies you know, tell you more things than what they're telling you. If you're looking, if you're really looking at it, do you understand what I'm saying? Not, no different than, you know, like when you just tell me, when you were showing me your instrument downstairs. Mm -hmm. Which is right there beside you there. It's a reader. It's a scanner. It'll scan yeah, it's by. a reader. Yeah. It, it, it's a reader. Um, that is old Egyptian technology. That's not new anything. What it in, indicates, um, not for you or me, because I think you've always been a little bit insightful to be on that. It's just that we haven't exercised it. If you get the point, you know, pretty much being in the, in the now space. And you we, know, did we talk about this? The fact that I was listening to Dr. Bruce Lipton, who wrote the Biology of Belief. And I was listening to from one of my, you know, things I'm involved in, an interview that he was doing. And mm. again, he was re-emphasizing what you've talked about before is the fact that the first seven years of, of our earthly existence, yeah. we are on in theta state. We mm -hmm. are in a recording mode. And so it is very important for them to, to give us a barrage of things that we're now copying on autopilot that become the foundation of who we are. So that the why the Pope said, give me the child for the first seven years and I'll show you the man. Exactly. And so we have been programmed as little, you know, robots, computers. We're, we're the greatest computer that exists because even this computer that you're on can't do anything unless you get on it and 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 do certain things. I mean, it, it, it has things it could do, but it, it needed a mind. It needed a, a being, if you will, to make it work. So we are computers, and in the first seven years, of course, we're biological, right? Biological, yeah. And and so at the at the first the first seven years, we're in a state called theta, and that is a recording state, just not a subconsciously recording and mimicking and learning what to be, how to be, what to say, what not to say. You know, that's what happens. And so most of mm. what, yeah. So most of us have been groomed um, to be. Uh, to to not recognize our etheric bodies, our spirit, our, our energy bodies. Already, we just deal with the, you know, three D. Now, in relationship to what you're saying right now, right now, and and this is indicative of uh, the dark priesthood operation that we've been in in this last uh, uh, hundred years more paradigm. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's re reflected in the philosophy pages of the General Education Board by John D. Rockefeller and Frederick T. Gates. And I'm pretty, pretty sure people are aware about the Gates family that has uh, patents even on the viruses that they've been putting on the people now and acting like the viruses came out of China or somewhere when actually they actually have parents um, have patents on them. Um, those who could see through it all know that they that these people who you've been calling government have actually been waging war on you there's another thing that they've been trying to hide uh and another reason why they're fighting trump so hard because of what he represents and again like i said you know years ago i'm not defending trump but i know that he was assigned do, do you understand what i'm saying to you by necessity now i want to read this and i want you to see the psychology of understanding what they were, what they were dealing with these biological machines, us, and their their intent, because it's, it's apparent for those who who can see through it all. Um, philosophy. This is the philosophy. This is all the school systems that have been operating in the Western Hemisphere under the United States Corporation operations, of which um, Barack H. Obama was. Uh, assigned prior to, um, you know, um, Trump, etc. And of course, the Trump is assigned now. And then you look at the clashes going on, the civil war operations that we've been telling people for the last four years. And, and you see more of it coming to the surface, even though they've still done a pretty good job of hiding it. 
you know, those who could see it, could see it years ago. And this is their position in their relationship to the children. And logically, many of these children is us and our parents, even before us. And so you can look at the dynamics of the politics now and the way people even deal with things. In our dreams, we have limitless resources and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hands. The present education conventions fade from their minds and unhampered by tradition, we work our own goodwill upon a grateful and responsive rural folk. We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers or men of learning or men of science. We have not to raise up from among them authors, editors, poets, and men of letters. We shall not search for embryo, great artists, paintings, musicians, nor lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen of whom we have an ample supply. The task set be we set before ourselves is very simple, as well as a very beautiful one. To train these people as we find them to a perfectly ideal life just where they are. So we will organize our children and teach them to do in a perfect way the things their fathers and mothers are doing in an imperfect way in the homes, in the shops, and on the farm, general education board, occasional papers, etc. Now, this is the philosophy page public. Now, how many of our parents for years, even as we were growing up, were going to PTA meetings, um, coming home, doing homework with their children, multiple organizations talking about they care for the youth and um, children's programs and better books and everything. And the very institutions that we were sending our children to was creating the very problems that we were countering. And so the jobs or the jobs geared around this whole platform of economics, of human trafficking, not acknowledged, it has collapsed. It has run its course problem, the Job system, systems that support the, the structural economics, structured economics around these whole educational platform, though in their whole nature from the beginning were retarded. It generated finance for those who controlled the system. However, the education system itself has frustrated the people because it was always um, in the nature of uncognate to most of them, working the very against the very nature of their well-being and existence. So the people were developing all kind of bipolar problems because it's in it's disharmonious with harmonic with nature, unknown to them. Uh, so the people who are controlling this system, knowing the rules of polarity, of gender, of mentalism, had designed and have been still using uh, known psychic attacks on these people for generations. So a lot of the sicknesses, mental sicknesses that are um, with our people actually come from the education system itself. And, uh, and the people who, who said it, and they've never suspected it. Now, this is back to where the blind faith thing is um, and used across the board in the name of religion and in the politics and then the connection 
And then you understand the politics and the necessity from their position of the 501c3 skull and bones agreement done with the priesthood who are working part of this network. And for the people who could see through these uh, parasites were uh, either um, tortured, murdered, um, suppressed, um, these are the martyrs. ostracized. The martyrs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the martyrs. Yes. Um, and these are the Martin Luther Kings and the um, Malcolm X's and the Emmett Till's and the, um, the different women and men who, from the nature of fundamental morality, took a position and people who really didn't understand in the name of their education were actually looking at these people as oddballs, not recognizing that these people were more harmonic with the nature of human righteousness, not, not necessarily being perfected in the sense, but that they were recognizing that the system itself was evil, if you get the point. But yet, remember the people being groomed to this, their jobs were connected within the system. And this is again why it's always been difficult to, how do you say, get people to reject the very system that they've depended on and they know nothing else. And this is back to in their philosophy page where they have trained the people to do perfectly what those before them have done imperfectly and the people don't know. And they're still yes. making those, um, <coughs> those uh, conditions now. For funding, there's a, a foundation with a husband and wife, who I will not name, who gives educational uh, grants to schools. Mm -hmm. And in that, I'm told by an educator who is an administrator, who kind of mm -hmm. that's why they know. I'm told by Moore's sister that there is actual language that says you cannot, to, if you accept this grant, you cannot teach it's civics. It's you cannot do this. You cannot talk about moors and you're gonna it's literally in mm -hmm. the the contract yes mm -hmm. in order to take these funds you have to teach this and so one of the things um i i heard in this in this uh executive order mm -hmm. was that that the federal government should not mandate you know just you know what is it called uh what do they call it it's not the not the, chicken. the curriculum for the for the states right it, they, they shouldn't and so it shouldn't be some you know, this is carte blanche. Everybody's getting this. Yes. Everybody's getting it. Everybody does. That's one of the problems we have recognized with a lot of of uh, our children that not one size fits all doesn't work. Oh, Some children yeah. learn totally different from others. It doesn't mean that they're less they're less intelligent. It means their way of grasping things. They might. They might, you know, some one, some might be left brain and some might be right brain and some may work better if you just let them go with, with putty and clay and paint and this and they'll create a masterpiece. There but if you structure them- There will be in harmony with their nature. With their nature. And we forced every, we, we tried to force every round, you know, peg into a, into a, a square peg into a round now, hole. Now, what we must recognize is that that a negative was part of the design and not just happenstance where people in goodwill trying to figure out how to fix something were actually you know using their divine intelligence uh, to fix things this is again why not only do they not teach civics they do not teach true hermetic divine principles which is why we talk about nature's god and nature's law nature's law. and they they say it in here they bring they, they open right up by saying because there are what, set of what is he saying? He's going back to principles. Because in order to save this thing, they got to go back to principles. In other words, the institution and the in the platforms connected to them, no matter what in general the public thinks of them, and the so-called jobs that have been built around them. They must be expunged because they are contaminated by design and people don't know that they're contaminated by design. They look at them as, as jobs that happen to not be funded. See, see this, anything that's, that's legitimate in the nature 
uh, construction um, does not necessarily need what you would call charity to uh, survive because it, it, it will self-generate. It is not, you know, when you look at nature, you know, uh, even the nature of them, um, of the dark priesthood uh, doing GMOs to the negative, not that GMO is a negative because we've always done hybrids, you know. Um, but their design was to enslave humanity. And so what they would do is uh, uh, the very uh, nature of the politics of the priesthood to take the to kill the feminine principle in order for them to rule. Um, so they, they know that the seed of life in the nature of seed of life is in all things. This is why, uh, for instance, um, as an example, just say as an, as an example, to kill the seeds in the watermelon, that's an example. Now the watermelon would look good, but actually without the seeds is not only does it not reproduce itself it actually had it has lessened life force within the product itself anyway and i in some cases i've heard where without the seeds it takes something away from you by ingesting exactly it exactly because it becomes parasitic to your system of looking for life mm -hmm. you know um so therefore now this is deliberate not accidental so it creates sickness then the sickness feeds the pharmaceutical military complex for population control right as, as well as the, the the practice the design practice that they agreed upon is that they would make the people pay for their own genocide wow yeah. that it would become profitable that it would not itself become a burden of investment because the people themselves will be used against themselves actually to help kill themselves. Not unlike, um, like say the average person um, who really doesn't understand the weaponization of, of, of the viruses mm -hmm. uh, by the people who they thought were government who, you know, notice, notice how they're always saying we, we're here to help you, <laughs> to, to keep you safe. <laughs> You know, uh, it's sort of like um, the, it's, it's sort of like uh, an invading criminal who sells wells, who goes at night while people are sleeping and poisoning people's wells. This is exactly, and in fact, what the United States Corporation operatives and officers have actually been doing to Aboriginal people. However, the problem that um, is manifested in, in 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 recent years is the middle class hybrid European who was not to be the target is now being sacrificed, which is why a lot of these things are coming out. A lot of troops are coming out. Uh, and you'll see even a lot of um, hybrid Europeans, even or who know the real history, even claiming more nationality to try to preserve their estates. I'm, I'm looking at the book, the book behind you as you speak on the shelf. Uh, I got a book, that book there. I know you have it too. Um, the New Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing the guy on a, a YouTube video being interviewed who wrote mm -hmm. that. And what he said is that he would, he, he and others like him working for the government would go into other countries and convince these other, try to convince these mm -hmm. leaders that um, they would, they would uh, actually figure out what kind of resources they had and mm -hmm. so forth that, that they could steal. And then go to the leaders and offer them a deal that was really kind of to help them, but it was also going to be we're going to get your children in uh, the best colleges in the United mm -hmm. States. We're going to do this yeah. and that, and they would offer them this deal. With basically, that means that they are going to take over their resources, and it would be you take the deal or well, see what happened to and the one next the yeah. one over here in this country. And they would go around devouring as mm -hmm. the as the word says yes. going to and fro upon the earth devouring nations, nations. Mm -hmm. and it's it's in that book and it was just interesting to hear from his mouth what they would do he's like well he wasn't the he wouldn't carry out 
the the deed. He would be but he, sick. But he, he, he would, would be, be he would be a pawn mover. He would go in. Yeah. And 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 make the and set the deal up or say, hey, he didn't go for it. And the next thing they you know, call the, they call it the three M's. Missionary, mercenary, Murderer. military, military. <laughs> That's the three M's. And this has been back to if people are to really understand modern world politics, if they don't study the Spanish Inquisition against the Moors. They they're looking at it in the face and don't see it. It doesn't see this is what happens. They're changing the name to different things, but the, the, the operation is hasn't changed. Hmm. And people uh, um, who really don't do research get caught up in biases that they're trained to get caught up in and actually re reject the obvious answers that are in their face. As an example, just like uh, uh, when they talk about the, the philanthropists um, giving grants for education and everything, uh -huh. and if it hadn't been for, and, and you, you know, you've been pretty much um, in the way of scholarship yourself. So it's not some, some things that you didn't necessarily know yourself, but when you, when you hear coming from others unexpected sources, it's like she told you what two particular things when you really pay attention to the conditions no civics no more history why were these things emphasized because is that the root of and, it well they were in there among other things but they were in there yeah but i'm just saying but i'm just saying these are keys that even though people would see that um, if you didn't have a background it's just an included um subject matter within an agenda and most people would read past it not that they didn't see it but if you turned around and then told them about their moorish birthright they would not relate these two as necessarily being important to their life every day and it's at the root of this whole thing you know and this is back to again when we talk about uh, um before as we introduce many things to people people for the most part, look at the Moorish movement incorrectly, thinking it doesn't involve them or think it doesn't involve every aspect of your life. I didn't think it involved me when you first yeah, started coming come to the House of Reawakening yeah. Minds. I didn't. You don't have to admit that. And I, I, was making, I was making a platform available. I met you, Sister Zodiac, as Elle introduced mm -hmm. us, and I said, oh, I need to, you know, and that was divine. It had to be divine mm -hmm. for me to invite you because I was just in between coming out of being a pastor mm -hmm. and the whole church leaving. Mm -hmm. And then I meet you within seven, eight months of that happening. So I- And even what you were doing is still part of the Moorish movement. I was doing something, but I didn't know anything about it. And even, I'll, be, I'll admit this, so I know how people are. Even when folks started coming once a month, because that's what it was at the time, and packing out House of Real Waking mm -hmm. the Minds, I did not see myself as being connected to the. You look at the, yourself it, as a facilitator. A facilitator. Of an honest and open minded facilitator looking for good and trying to help. Right. Now, point. Even many people, as an example, that goes to temples, been going to temples for years, right? Don't see what we're talking about right now. And they've been involved for years, which, of course, um, Going to your site, you know, I saw through from day one since I walked in, I could see their energy. You know, um, even when I first became what you call more open conscious, um, and which uh, inspired me to do a lot that I do because I, I, I could see so far beyond that, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and, and, and it's sort of like, you know, how like when, um, to the view of others, you're introduced to something, and as soon as you get it, you actually advance far beyond them, even with what they have, simply because of the way you see. Absolutely. It's not a disrespect for them or their position, but it's almost like walking into school, immediately graduating, going beyond even the professor, but based on your insight, not because you're doing anything special. But then looking and seeing how the capacities of the human capacities have been suppressed when you know when you're looking at yourself as being inadequate and yet you also recognize the inadequacy of many who you may go to for information and you recognize and as soon as you walk into them you read them and so everything they have to offer they, 
they can't even block you because you already see through it and past it and beyond it. Yeah. And now you're trying to associate with them and they're trying to teach you and you've already walked past them. Uh, then you you you're uh, you don't want them to feel uncomfortable at the same time you want to give you want to give respect to the position that people hold because you're trying to learn, you know, uh, and you find that to be a paradoxical. I, I think that happens a lot in churches yeah because you know if i remember myself just thinking in terms of church mm -hmm. when people come in and they eat for my own self i i could see myself and wasn't trying to take over anything but i could see myself doing it different yeah. better perhaps or whatever and i think people come to various places to get knowledge and a lot of times i think it is just to unlock they don't know it, yeah. but it's just to unlock what's within them, them that, that them. was already there. Already there. And and it's not like that this person standing in front of them is gonna pour so all this great it was yeah. poured in them when they came here. Yes. But it had had been locked up. And sometimes you just have to get into the right mm -hmm. space, the right energy to extract it or to, you know, just to activate what's there. Yes. And then you got that Eureka moment, the light bulb goes on and you just know, it is not that you just know, it's that that's like, like I said, you remember there, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that when you come into your kingdom, it's allegedly, they, they were saying, remember me. And I always taught it as yeah. reconnect me to my reality, to yeah. my truth, to yeah. my true purpose. When I, yeah. when I remember means like to me, re, you know, when the members are dis when you're disconnected yes. from purpose so remember me just means put me back in remembrance of who i am mm -hmm. give me back uh, my divine mind mm -hmm. Act reactivate my divine mind so that i can do what i came to do not so now, much of what you're going to do for me and analyze you know just like when we read the um um john d rockefeller mm -hmm. um philosophy page uh -huh. etc and you can see that they were cognate of, of, of their agenda. Right. The agenda was not a, um, say, a, a misjudgment on their part or a lack of uh, not figuring this out real good, not knowing. But you can see that they actually planned cognitively to dumb down masses of numbers of humanity with a, an intelligent cognitive agenda of making them retarded purposefully doing purposefully this. and so and then we have the dynamics now of you know how do you say trying to get people to think for themselves to start governing themselves and they're still in that grooming looking for the leader guy to guide them out type thing or to give them um the this e e evolutionary learning um because they've been so far outside of their natural selves or even a knowledge of divine law and they were told divine law were was belief systems and worshiping etc which they're not aware that's part of that very paradigm of that same priesthood because they thought that the priesthood and the corporate state education system were separate energies or separate agendas. Mm -hmm. Now, and now the deal of it is um, um, in relationship to nature and divine law, the problem that they're having from a governance point of view is that in spite of the um, institutionalization of these agencies, Whereas they, the, the paradigms and support paradigms that they have used and that have been solidly in place for generations to support, to facilitate, to manage, to administer these uh, um, agencies that were in fact designed for human retardation and creating human sickness and then profiting off it and then having a paradigm of genocide to control the population so you wouldn't have rebellion against the rulership. Now, what is the, the, the dynamics that they're dealing with and it's also reflected in this executive order um, when you look at it metaphysically um, is that um, 
the Aquarian energy disallows it. So their politics, no matter what their politics are, can't save it. Uh, the dynamics that they're dealing with is uh, the people being used to them throwing the different support agencies, um, you know, sort of like a call and response, call and response type thing. And the people in general still have not um, grasped the reality that currency is not money. And then they're trying to promote currencies. Uh, credit is not money. They're trying to promote credit because they're trying to maintain power. It's dead. And the support paradigms are dead. Um, and it's sort of like the Bush family was saying, if, if the people really knew what we did, they'd hang us. You know what I mean? And that's absolutely true. This is what they're dealing with now. Now, because the people themselves out of ignorance have been supporting their own enslavement. Sure. Even in the name of their, so all, so here you have a dynamics where people's degrees on walls and stuff that they go into debt for are actually useless to them. Hmm. It hasn't, it hasn't dawned on them that that's the, that the paradigm is dead on so many levels. And they're looking to go back. It's so, you know, it was like, well, we said, uh, I think a, a month or so ago, I think when we did our last class, and I, and I, I just drew something out there for people to look at. I said, take this in consideration, even though I'm not going into this as a subject matter. The people have been asking to get off the plantation. And now they've been thrown off the plantation, off their jobs, <laughs> and they're looking to go back on the plantation. I won't go to the, all the analysis of it, but take that in consideration as we're speaking. It's time to do something different. It's time Not to just that. So what do you do when the paradigms of their education have not supported any Aquarian thinking? It's not that these things haven't been mentioned. Do you understand? Right. right. However, the technologies that, that are harmonic with the realities of past times, that's more of future times. They haven't been exposed to their, their education is based around agency of human suppression. And what the, the priesthood has done is that they tie their life cycles to it. Meaning that this is what they've done as an example. Like say for instance, you meet the love of your life as an example, right? Mm -hmm. And it never dawns on you that the agreements that you're groomed from childhood to make or to seek to do when you grow up. Um, you grow up in, as a little girl, you're, you're, you're thinking, you're seeing people around you going through these weddings and all this beautiful stuff and you look and you groom your life to that and you look for the love of your life and, and you never dawns on you that the priesthood, you know, created this, this, this uh, uh, certificate system of sales of humans to humans and you never it never dawns on you that even when you go through that system under them that is actually cat a spell cast from the door and 90 percent of it will never work because it's actually a spell cast it is designed for human trafficking it's not designed for love and harmony in your relationship with the divine creator in heavens and all the stuff Dope and everything, and you never dawns on you that a certificate even on the eggs in your womb. How devious this thing is from day one. All of the support systems around it projected of love and monogamy and harmonics, and then people wonder why 90% of that, not really 99% of it never works. Uh, not in the intent. But in fact, it never works. Mm -hmm. And people end up blaming each other in the real deal. And they don't even know they've been manipulated from the beginning by a dark priesthood that's been using both God and economics and the Jesuses and Muhammad's, etc., for human trafficking purposes and actually dark side psychic energy attacks for profit. And look how many lives 
and mental problems and betrayals people have experienced in these platforms that they have given in their mind of divine origin because they were told that. And it's not that these things aren't divine in their nature, but the people never suspected that the priesthood have taken all these things and contaminated them deliberately for human trafficking. And so when you look at all of the support systems around these things that we've taken as norm, without a knowledge that the priesthood had actually contaminated the whole world, because we usually attach to these things, love, God, Jesus, commitment, loyalty, mm -hmm. honor, and it always ends up being the opposite. And costly, costly, and it never dawns on the people that the people who they've been calling government was doing this to them. So many people in their everyday relationships end up being angry at each other, not knowing that they were puppets. That's a hard thing for a lot of people to handle. Uh, it really is. It really, it really is. You know, I was having a conversation today with someone and, and I was looking at a video. Actually, this part came out of a video that they sent me. And it was about something that someone had discovered that was natural, mm -hmm. that pretty much took care of almost anything that you can think of mm -hmm. that they tell you you can't get over. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just dancing around mm -hmm. without mentioning it. And this particular person that I spoke to had been given um, a diagnosis or prognosis of four months and was told mm -hmm. to go to um, mm -hmm get ready for hospice mm -hmm. he, for him and his family. And this was in March of 2019. Mm -hmm. I was talking to them today mm -hmm. in November of 2020. Yes. What they did other than what was told to them is they thought out what the creator, what was natural, mm -hmm. very simplistic, very inexpensive, did that and, the whole part and thing. was cured. Now, the, the people that had this particular product Mm -hmm. were at one time in the United States mm -hmm. and when they was found what they were doing and that people were getting cured mm -hmm. if they ran them out of business and threatened to kill them oh, and yeah. all kinds of stuff so but the fact of the matter is that anything and it was a doctor talking to almost anything that is can be done naturally it cannot well, be patented anything that helps humanity for real they don't want been, it no, it's been that they don't I, I agree with you, but let's let's start look, saying things a little differently. Anything that actually helped e humanity evolve mm -hmm. or live better and or longer or longer goes under attack from the very people that you thought was your government. The governments, as you've known them, are trash, are parasitic garbage. Likewise with the priesthood who've been running all of the religious organizations. Now that's the truth. The uncomfortable paradigm that we're dealing with now is humanity trying to handle the collapse of all the agencies around these whole paradigms, both political and religious, not knowing that they have been enemies to humanity. They have not been supportive of humanity. Hence our conversation about the things that had to, that must happen. Nature's law, well, nature's law. Must God. occur in order for. It must, it must come down in order for humanity to be liberated. The problem, part of the problem that we have is that humanity has been mentally dependent upon these agencies because they have known nothing else. So therefore they trust nothing else because it's been done to them from childhood. Yeah. So, so it's not that they don't, they lack divine intelligence. They do have it. Their reference points are dead. Their um, education is toxic. And then they have this as a reference point to try to solve problems, which is why the people keep going in circles. This is again why, again, when you look at the dynamics, 
uh, considering the priesthood and their operations, force du jour, um, because they're dealing with the dynamics of acquiring energy coming in, which does not recognize personal station. So they don't have the patient options that they had in the Piscean age that they could keep messing around because what happens, things collapse. Society will collapse. However, they have not done what they were supposed to do generations ago, even since the 1960s. Remember when we talked about the commission on decolonization? They kept kicking the can down the road. Now what you have is the systems are collapsing and the people have no foundation of operation. They have no foundation sightful transitional agencies. Um, fake spirituality has itself been a business. It has not been an issue of option of what people believe or what they don't believe. For the most part, all of the platforms themselves have been contaminated. It does not mean that there's no truths out there for people. And it does not mean that yeah. some people that are are doing it or are, are not sincere, exactly. but if the basis of their education and knowledge of what they were taught. What they were trained to they, do yeah. imperfectly they were taught perfectly to be imperfect. And because they believed in the agencies and their officers, they perfected their imperfections. <laughs> you know, um, which is again, pardon me, why uh, beliefs, quote unquote, have such a strong foundational projection of instructions and support systems, books, etc., promoted by many for so many generations that are sourced by many people who sincerely keep trying to fix things and nothing ever gets fixed. Well, um, this next round, we were li listening that, you know, the next round, like for instance in Pennsylvania and even here, something, you know, all this, this next round is shut down, which we were already promised we're going to come. Mm -hmm. I think it's to put like the like like the coup de bras for the ones that they know the businesses. We're talking about this. The, the people are trying to go back to what they think is normal. Right. And they are disallowing it now. And, and, and this is where we're, we're talking about on the way down here. Right. Because the discomfort is, is that it can't because they're not. You know, it's sort of like um, as an example, you know, like when we talked earlier today. Um, now, one thing, in, you know, just with our conversation, with our conversation, with us, mm -hmm. over the years, from an, you know, from an engineering perspective, mm -hmm. you know, I'm very good in many areas, but I consciously and cognitively and deliberately avoided a lot of areas of social media because I already know what they really are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, also knowing we're getting past that. But the deal of it is, is that um, people not knowing that all of these things were weaponized mm -hmm. against them, you know, yet to operate in the paradigm, the dead paradigm that's also dying, a lot of these instrumentalities are functional and are projected as necessary. However, also knowing that in the other parallel paradigms that a lot of this stuff is not even used or necessary. However, you know, how do you deal with people that are, are that are that are, are finding their reality in a dead paradigm that you already know is past? You, while trying to communicate within that paradigm. So now you have to depend on uh, trying to stimulate people to, to go within their upper chambers of the mind to actually deal with the capacities, the human capacities that already exist 
and then finding it difficult for them to communicate with you or for you to really comprehend or, 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 or how do you say, find a ground of communication that's functional. And then if you do connect, um, they lack certain reference points to any other dimensional reality. And so it's almost like, um, you know how the Bible talk about casting pearls to a swine type thing? Do not cast your pearls before swine. Um, you find that difficult you, or that situation too. Um, and then, then you find the priesthood who has created all this din, you know, in positions of power to counter you, to counter you. And then even like a lot of times, you know, like you throw a life raft to someone and they think you're the enemy when you actually throwing them a life raft yeah. because of their beliefs, because they were trained that beliefs were was spirituality. And this is again why it's important for people to have a general knowledge of the seven hermetic laws, <laughs> the fundamental principles, you know, like they read in the Bible and the Quran and the different holy books that the truth, you know, is and it uh, uh, doesn't pass away. And and so that is that statement is based on the hermetic law. But yet, if you ask the average person about the principles of, of hermetic law that we just read, most of them are familiar with it. And yet all of their world's religions are rooted there. But because of the anthropomorphic presentment, people don't know how to make do a crossover. They can't see correlations. They can't see the correspondence. They can't see the duality only because they're they're locked in into a childlike anthropomorphic mentality by design, not not because they themselves lack intelligence, is that the priesthood is just so dark and dirty and for their own personal benefit, they have they have deliberately manipulated humanity. Now where many of them really want to help, uh, they have done so much damage that even when they want to tell the truth, they wouldn't believe, be believed. And this is where you find a lot of the hybrid Europeans who've been telling the truth about the politics, who have been, you know, castigated or rejected or, or referred to as anti-government and a whole bunch of negatives, et cetera, for telling the truth. Um, and then you see a lot of people who are in position of authority, you know, attacking anyone who teach civics or constitutional principle because it exposes them as part of the problem and they, and they have, they have an image to the public that, you know, that they want to preserve and they don't want the public to recognize, particularly when people um, start getting some insight that a lot of their so-called imams and preachers and rabbis and sheiks and other people in secret were masons, Eastern stars and other things. Now, that's fine because most of those um, uh, societies has a negative uh, connotation to the people. But if the people really knew the knowledge behind those things, they would recognize that these people are devious and that the information itself is not, in fact, wasn't negative and never was. It was actually the spirituality and the knowledge that was supposed to be given to them that they were cheated out of. And that the reason why they're given a negative connotation to the public is so that the people don't look at them and find out that they're so-called leaders and preachers and, and, and politicians were actually themselves in character demons, although the knowledge itself is not demonic. And the people would give a connotation of de demonism to the knowledge, you know, it's like if somebody do this, whoa, it's a devil, whoa, he made a sign, you know, and stuff like that. Or, or even this, you know, like, which is the goat's head and the crescent moon, the fertility operations of the womb. But yet it's given a negative. You, you get the whole point? Like mm -hmm. that. Um, and so what has happened, it made people subject to the agencies of limited information designed by the rulers, distinguished from them being harmonic with nature and themselves and evolving. And so again, nature's law and nature's God. Somebody just text um, a picture. And maybe they may be on the... Uh call but they said to 
ask us if we would share this with their permission. And it is um they they got this in the mail, a port important business notice from the Arkansas Secretary of State. And what it what it's stating is that the Arkansas Tax Reform Act of 2019 transferred the administration and collection of all franchise tax taxes in the state of Arkansas from the Arkansas Secretary of State, SOS, to the Department of Finance and Administration, DFA. In agreement with the SOS, the DFA will acquire the Arkansas Franchise Tax Section on January 1st, 2021, with the first tax report due May 1st, 2021, for all corporations as per the act. And then it goes on to say, you know, for information, please visit DFA website. Um, whatever i don't know what the implicate but there i guess there the taxes were handled with the secretary of state in delaware secretary of state mm -hmm. but they it, they have transferred this apparently as of january 21st 1st rather january 1st 2021 it's going to their department of finance and administration Mm -hmm. Is that? Do you think that has anything to do with? Um, I would look into that, but but it, it I wonder if they'll do that it. here because I, they're so. I would, I would I would assume just on the surface, um, that there's an effort to correct or go back to the republic order of things mm -hmm. because all the agencies and support agencies are thoroughly beyond corrupt and are actually so counter, both counterintuitive and counter true. Because remember, all of these are secondary operations or uh, corporate operations were designed to because most of the taxes that the people were were uh in in their mind paying were actually tributes to england and for the most part not not any of the benefit actually going here Let, let's let's give an, a, 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 an example like for instance like people how many of our people by the day and we're talking about intelligent people right mm -hmm. have uh instrumentality come from the irs and been paying it for years and never knew that none of the finance not one penny of it goes to the benefit of the people here to schools to the streets to any administration of the people but absolutely goes to the circle church and the chancery and to the queen of england as tribute absolute absolute every penny and including being divided amongst the two parties that you've been calling the Democrat and Republican Party of the Wigamores, who have outside investment and um, accounts offshore outside of the United States and all the agency were put in place to support that, which is again, why all of these people have been working and paying taxes for years and saw no benefit how could people generate in their in the reality of math this so-called so much finance and then always be in debt? How is it possible? I don't know. No, because they weren't building wealth. They were building debt. Problem that they have is that the systems have collapsed. And they don't want people to recognize that. This is, again, when you look at the math and get out of the emotions of it right just basic math a child say elementary school um and, and you hear people talking about stimulus what makes stimulus practical at all for something that's self-generative if you're working if, if, if you spent uh, most of your adult life contributing to funds aside from your everyday work and acquiring because you can only acquire but so many things you got to give that thing that you actually use. <laughs> How could you possibly always be in debt? And it never dawns on you. And to the point that when this cycle is interrupted, it doesn't even stop interrupted. That the persons who are claiming to be government have to send you or anyone a stimulus check. And then don't tell you till later, because they ain't tell you, that you're gonna be taxed on that too. 
And they will tell you, you know, we told people earlier, the IRS is a subdivisional agency of the Circle Church and the Chantry that belongs to the International Monetary Fund that's run by the Rothschilds and the Vatican. It has nothing to do with no damn country whatsoever. And the, uh, as an example, Social Security Administration, you know, with those bonds, and those birth certificate bonds, et cetera, marriage certificate bonds, you know, it's part of the IRS. And the U.S. Treasury, which was dead. The, now, this is back to what we are talking about earlier, America, quote, unquote, and the United States, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Part of the IMF. They didn't have to have the Treasury. Why do you think, why is it that in, the, in just this past year, they quote unquote blended, blended the IRS and the Treasury Department for the United States Corporation? I didn't know they did that. Yeah, we don't just tell you. You know, just little things that take place that the average person and that people in general don't pay attention to that affects their everyday life. There's an assumption with the people that the IRS, right, and the Treasury or the finances that they've been getting comes from the U.S. Treasury, right? Yeah. That their Social Security, as they've been taught, comes from the so-called Treasury and the um, Social Security Administration, right? Right. That's not true. Comes from the IMF. Do you understand? And this is why, uh, again, you know, when we uh, uh, gave that paper out that you that you put on the flash drive, mm -hmm. and these that's only a drop in the bucket of a lot of other stuff that we've been telling people for the like, last 12, 14, 15 years. And and this is back to um state of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, when we say you know, you know what that we're talking plural. Mm -hmm. The the agencies that people have been used to as norm for them that have been in their mind, their life, economic and life support tied to their what? The the roof over their head or the food that goes into your mouth, or i.e. the medicine that goes in your veins and stuff, and people thinking all of these things were put in place for the positive evolution of humanity and all of those put in place to cause injury yeah. for profit. But, but we don't know other things. Do you understand? Yes, it's the what they industry. have done to humanity is beyond criminal. Beyond criminal. Um, point is, the people know the fundamentals of nature's God, nature's law. Uh, intellectually, they can start seeing through all of this stuff uh, uh, aside, like, say, for instance, uh, uh, some people who, who just have natural, what you call psychic insight, can see some of this stuff anyway. But people who, who, who have not exercised their divine mind can use the principles and start exercising them and actually start stimulating their divine mind and see through these things. This is another reason why they need to know hermetic law. Because it's not a belief system, it's actually the work, the phenomena of nature is what they should have been taught in the name of religion in the first place. It's not just a good idea or something that we're talking about that someone may be interested in. Anything that they've been calling their so-called religions are rooted in this. However, this that's a straightforward. This is actually, and as you could, uh, or can probably comprehend for people who really know why people who know these rules are usually uh, in the minds of most people who don't really understand it, why they're atheistic. It's not that they don't believe in higher powers. They know that the masses have been getting be, be given bullshit <laughs> royally. And but rather than uh, argue with the ignorant, you know, they just hold a position to survive in this paradigm of BS rather than try to convince the ignorant, if you get the point. However, some who, who have love for humanity try to impart the spirituality, the ancient Kabbalistic spirituality or the ancient Egyptian knowledge which is really the foundation of, of the true spirituality and religion. 
And this is again why, like you, you, you start finding when people who are really scholarly in religious study, if they share that information, uh, many of the people who have been groomed in the name of religion actually don't relate to it because they think that you're anti-religious, not knowing that they've been under mind control. You know, so the paradigm is very interesting. This is the uh, uh, the other problem that they're having, and this is a problem lot uh, for humanity at masses, is that these institutions that they've been depending on, that they're looking for restoration of, have run their course, they're dead. The rulers have nothing in its place, and so they're caught as being both disingenuous and unqualified to guide you. Most of them, if they, if they told the truth, then they would become the enemy because the people would recognize that they've always been living a different philosophy for their personal lives. This is where, you know, you, when people start really examining things and discover that the priesthood and the politicians have always said, do as I said, do not as I do, then they'll begin to understand why as opposed to looking at it as uh, circumstantial, that it was deliberate. And that these people were not honorable at all. From the beginning, they were never honorable. And that all this demonology that they've been promoting to the public was actually they themselves in the platform of their governmental operations in both the religious world and the political realm. Now, that's the real truth. And when you're looking at... Um, some of these um, changes that are being made in the political uh, uh, agendas, I relate this to you. Uh, some of them are trying to help fix some of the stuff before they get lynched by the people. Because when the people find out the priesthood and the politicians together cognitively did this to us, you can also understand the difficulty that they're having with Donald Trump. He, and I'm not, like I said before, and I'll say again, I'm not defending Donald Trump. But I'll tell you this, Donald Trump didn't lose that election. Not that there was an election in the concept that people think there was an election. He was appointed and he's still appointed. And he must carry out what he was appointed to do in regards to what they're telling the masses. But I guess my, my question early at the very beginning when you begin to read the executive order was whether or not given what we're told is happening and, and if in fact uh biden does take office because some of those things that was just um that was just released on the 2nd of november he's talking about 120 days out and this and that and the other he's going to be out he'll be out of office by then does that mean um that whoever takes office would not have to would have to follow Let's those this way how can anyone who holds that office, right, operate other than in a Republican platform that's been restored without obviously exposing themselves and being immediately lynched by others? Now, keep in mind, it's not so much our people, because remember, our people are still semi sleep and paradoxically twisted right now. However, the middle-class Europeans who have uh, in the last 10 years or so watched their middle-class platform being dissolved, mm -hmm. if you think for one minute, one minute, not even a half a minute, that, that, the, that the Kyklos operations of Zionists, et cetera, known as the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. will be able to execute their platforms, their design platforms, and get away with it and breathe. I suggest things will be open in such a way that it'll amaze most people how vicious they will become. Put it this way, most of the cure of the, of, of the corrupt political platform is operating at North America. Mm -hmm will be dismantled by hybrid Europeans. Well, they, we already see them. That's who's out there. No, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the politics of it all. Although the true heirs and beneficiaries are Aboriginal people. 
And this is back to the the dynamics of, of the great and dreadful at the same time. It's a great day and a dreadful day at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, according to where you are, however, no one will escape it. It doesn't matter what side they're on. You know, where people think they're going to sit back and, and not, you know, the idea, oh, I'm not into that. I'm not going to be involved. It involves you whether you like it or not. But the other deal of it is uh, what, they're sort, what they sort and what they seek for people who are voting because they need a new stock. Mm -hmm. Their vote counts well as well uh, from the point of view that they are sanctioning themselves as stock. But as far as, you know, the idea of their voice being heard to the positive, their vote don't count, never did. <laughs> do, you, do you understand? Because mm -hmm. they're being used, if you get the point. You know how people say vote counts? Yeah, not the way they thought it was, though. <laughs> um, they're actually sanctioning for a um, a continuation of the perpetration of the fraud that, that got us here in the first place. However, uh, it does them no good because the fact of the matter is that the world, remember I've been telling people for the last five, seven years, the world's no longer buying their treasury bonds, so it doesn't matter if they keep creating these instrumentalities. No one's buying them. So you have a feedback loop. This is again, as we've told the people, that the credit windows of the world have frozen. Mm -hmm. And the trade windows of the world have frozen. Donald Trump's assigned to start helping fix this thing, and he can choose to do it or not do it. Doesn't matter. It they will fix it or it collapses altogether. They will not return to quote unquote norms. It wasn't norm then, and it ain't norm now because it's dead. It's sort of like um, it's sort of like trying to run the algorithms of the operative world today with a, a rotary phone. <laughs> No matter how beautiful that phone is, um, if you're not prepared to actually move ahead, you can you can uh, stand there and twiddle your fingers and either become fodder, or you can do what? Uh, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and I know you want to go back to that job. It's not there. Get over yourself. You know what I mean? And you know the paradigm of say even corporations putting funds aside for you and me to fly to Fresno, California every week back and forth, right? On a flight to have meetings with some other corporate head. You know, you better get used to Zoom and then you better get used to be going beyond that even. But that's for now, if you get the whole point. Yeah. It's a new paradigm. You say that's a Zoom stock is, is soaring because everybody's virtual everything is they're trying to get us into a virtual reality well we kind of <laughs> are in a virtual reality you've been there anyway that's what i said i can't have to correct that myself is part of the new world we are order. projecting you know I, I i firmly believe that consciousness is somewhere out there projecting itself into what we see what we see so we've really been in a virtual reality situation anyway, all the, anyway but they're changing Becoming the cognitive yeah. and harmonic with it yeah and absolutely. operative absolutely see what the, the, the deal that that a lot of the priesthood problems are having is that they're afraid of us coming to that realization and jumping past that too because that a lot of that's going to be obsolete in short order too that's oh. what i'm trying to say well we, we that's what we're saying that everything that gets released has is just something that they've been sitting on that's been step. here for you know it's being phased by in. the time you get used to it you're going to be jumping again yeah yeah but what we need to really do is get on that you know i noticed that people like uh there's like dr phil valentine um billy carson and uh black magic 363 and all they talk everybody's starting to talk about remote viewing and all that. Mm -hmm. This is a skill, you know, that somebody can learn, but it's something that we used to do yeah, anyway, exactly. because we didn't have telephones and, and teleview prompters and all that mm -hmm. stuff. We, we just had this, Exactly. we just had this. And so remote viewing is just getting people back 
into the place where you can really see what's going on. That mm -hmm. you know, Big Brother and Sister can watch. You, you know, an interesting thing like like you mentioned, Brother Phil, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when I used to go to his house in, in New York years ago, like in 95, 94, 95, Phil used to have um uh different uh, uh metaphysicians come, you know, from around the country, and a lot of celebrities even came through. And my son, myself, and, and Hannibal, we went up there, you know, we had, at that time was sharing some of our literature with Phil and his son, etc. Um what's that street? Um Start with C, where he used to live on that. He used to domicile on that street in New York, and he used to have a TV in the in, in the backyard in the, in the living room, and it used to be packed, right? And when you look at um, uh, Phil's metaphysical and spiritual development, you know the things that uh, a lot of things that were talked about then is like that's like grade school cakewalk to him now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, and um, it is it is not unlike that. That's going to be with humanity on a larger scale. You know what I mean. Um, now, uh, the capacity of them uh, recognizing that all of the paradigms, the support paradigms that were in place uh, to support both the agencies and the so-called jobs is dead. You know of uh, the even you look at subtle things, little subtle things, where um, how we invested ourselves in, as an example, with women, right? Yeah. You know, women invested in all kinds of different makeups and different looks for different affairs in different activities yeah. that they will not invest in anymore. It's dead. Yeah, that's true. You know, and so now you have both trans, you have both transportation of distribution of construction of manufacturing of a lot of support systems that support those things. Something as simple as makeup. That's broader than most people think. That's just a small paradigm. Yeah. Even the different. Um, uh, even clothes. clothing so, yeah, styles yeah, because if you're not. Aren't even necessary. You don't need. I was out the other day, and I mean, like. You see me with, yeah. with my t-shirt. What does it say? Yeah, <laughs> it just says. Even look at this. Yeah, you're wearing t-shirts. You're wearing yeah, I mean, you're wearing slippers, you and you're in front of a screen. Every every sort of like every day. I remember it used to be every day, even when I was going to school. You know, um, I remember there was a time I wouldn't even wear sneaks. Now you call I yourself not, Taji guy with the cheap sneaks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I would not wear a pair of pants that didn't have a crease in it. You know, I would not wear an unpressed shirt. You know what I mean? Um, now it's a pain in two butts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. well, I got about what five or six suits that I've never even worn that are. That or that I, that I got the plastic over so they don't collect dust because I ain't gonna wear them probably whatever. Uh, and that's not even stuff that I do wear if you get the point. Uh, but and it's not this. I don't even like the look. Do, Everything has changed. I think we and we can create simplicity. Simplicity, yeah, simplicity. Um, all like you said, all of the things that we have come to think that we needed to be up on or part yeah. of in order to be whatever it was. Like you said, is collapsing. That in and of itself is causing um, extra finances to be in, in your pocket. Because and remember, and, people were going to those jobs to produce those products, right? Because to move uh, those products, to transport those products, to support systems to make manufacture those products, the houses to sell those products. That is dead on so many fronts. Right. So now, now, and look at this, and this is back to the dynamics that you see that. We, they need, they're asking for stimulus to keep these stores open for products they're not going to damn sell. Yeah. They're, they're asking to support airlines, right, that ain't going to damn fly. Right. They've got what in the pipeline debt for airplane planes that ain't going to damn fly. I have a friend that's an airline mechanic and he's had not been able to work for 
you know, since March. Because they're not, you know, when you go fix, but they're not flying. Because a lot of their big ticket operations were corporations where people were going to meetings all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody don't know what on means. No. You know, like you say, virtual. So they have been virtual else. concerts yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They'll sit home and, and do this. And, virtual and then is, a lot of people got laid off and they were all sad and everything. Then they got used to working home. You know, I look at my niece when I was over the house. I was home, right? The other day, right? So I was home, niece working, got her desk, you know, doing work that she was doing on a regular basis. You know, from when she had her, before she had her baby, she going back and forth, babysitter and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now she's home, got the baby, they're all having fun, she's cooking, and then going back to her desk, going to work, getting work done and everything. She, oh, please. Say, yeah. Like, who wants to go back? Exactly not. But and that's why, you know, I, I've been posting stuff like we're talking, you know, I have all kinds mm -hmm. of entrepreneurial streams going on, and I put stuff out there mm -hmm. because I want people, and, and I, I refuse to be a part of anything that's not going to help somebody well, not productive. silver for me was because yeah. you kept saying silver mm -hmm. and everything i'm doing energetically has to do with the fact that i want to be help people heal themselves you know mm -hmm. and anything i put out there i want people to know that it's so that maybe it'll click something and you can sit home and you might be working still for them now they got you working at home mm -hmm. but you can do this too because exactly. you don't have so. yeah nobody's gonna you know Get a on you. lot of them businesses are going to go out as people begin to recognize their own capacity. Right. By default. Why bust your butt? For somebody else. To make somebody wealthy when what you're doing, you could have been doing. For yourself. Even before you never dawned on you. Yeah. People didn't remember, and this is back to people not having faith in themselves. Right. Having faith in the quote unquote system. And the system was in place to use them up. And was retarding, uh, retarding them at the same time. <laughs> and all the agencies built around to support that paradigm. And so even look at this. How many people are in debt in so-called student loans for education that was never designed to, to actually progress them? Yeah. Not meanwhile, they need a job in that paradigm to, to pay for the DAG loan so-called um, student loans. So by default of reality, all those outstanding student loans, what are they going to pay them with? Nothing. Oh, exactly. Because it didn't even, it did, for most people, when they get out of college these days, if they've gotten out, they don't even have a job to go to. Exactly. So it did, what did it, what did it amount to? Just a bill, a bill, Which a debt. The design in the first place, but it didn't dawn on them. See, this is what happens when the domino effect of the fraud started spiraling. It exposed the other parts of it. Mm -hmm. And the people have limited reference points to anything else. That's what the problem is. 2008, it went crazy. You know, I was in, in the housing industry, mm -hmm. in the housing bubble, and all they, they did a big stimulus. Mm -hmm. And all they did was they they're saying, oh, 2020, it came back. No, it didn't, it didn't stop in 2008. Never, the 2000 was late 2007. The paradigm of what they're calling the housing bubble, because you got to understand the housing bubble is not a qualification of what really went down. No. I know. That's, the, that's the public statement. That was the, the cover up. That's what they called it. Yeah. The point of it is they, they never fixed it because they couldn't. And what they're dealing with today is 208. Right. Put it what off. they're dealing with <laughs> is that the can kicked it down the road and the can finally fell off a cliff. So they don't even have the can to kick no more. <laughs> so now COVID is a cover up for them. Yeah. Oh, and, and then people were still trying to get back to what they think is norm. So they got to do it again. But they warned us that it was going to happen again. Again, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. They sure did. They sure did. They sure did. Uh, they sure did. And I, I just, you know, hope people 
allow their divine mind to get back into be prepared to, for radical change yes. not just change radical change you've got to let go and this is this is the force du jour they're being forced to let go so what is it part of what they're doing what is the social distancing distancing what it really is all right on another level right on a more metaphysical level to get together Remember, if the virus jump over 6,000 miles, six feet ain't going to do you any good. That's, that's number one. So let's get over that. The real deal is people are trying to get back to what they think is normal. They ain't allowing it to happen because it can't happen. Yeah, I have a picture of Treasure with his butt up in the air looking underneath the, the under the um, love seat. Uh -huh. And I said, looking for a new normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. my, it's not going to exactly it's not gonna happen what you left wasn't even normal mm -mm. so and it's back to what everybody talked about they want to get off the plantation and you they got thrown off the plantation and trying to get back on but this is what we talk about whenever you want something or desire something you need to be specific about how you want that you to happen so if you're just like general i just want to get off well this hey mm -hmm. people that have specific requests to the universe about what they want have something in mind that they begin to manifest yeah. And and they met they, and folks, but if you just the same thing with relationships, I just I don't want I just don't want no no good man. And then you get a no good man. Why well, keep getting no good man? Because that's all you're talking about is no good man. Exactly. So that's how the universe you works. Know, the other thing with all of us is the unwillingness to let go. Yeah. Or you know, like a gambler don't know when to get up on. They know when to get up on. Oh, ticket, I know. But they won't get up yes, on. I know. I know they people won't. that will win. And big time, big and then back. and give it all back plus what they came for. Yes. With. So yeah, of course, <laughs> that's how we are, and we've been trained to be that now, way. The problem that they, that 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 we're faced with now collectively is that the lean on agencies themselves are looking for something to lean on, and this is what the people really. It doesn't. It the people have it hasn't dawned on the people really. That the systems have collapsed. Mm -hmm. They don't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> no, at all. And they have pushed people out so that they, it'll be easier than having them go out with the boxes like they were doing. Not just that, <laughs> it's because they it, it's sort of like uh controlled chaos rather than chaotic chaos, mm -hmm. but chaos no, nonetheless. But no one's going to openly or publicly admit the chaos of it all, mm -hmm. that the agencies that people have learned to depend on have collapsed. Mm -hmm. Because it was built on a fraud in the first place. They ran their course. The problem of it is, is that the politicians and the priesthood would have done themselves and the world a favor if they had started willingly dismantling some of the fraud but they themselves began to get joy in the miseries of others mm -hmm. and this is what has really happened hmm. it is they have to we need to wake up we need to reconnect in a spiritual level a highly it, for real for energetically real, for real. Spiritually. and it can't be fake this no. is the point it Fake anything, you know, like we said a couple years ago, that so all masks are off. Yeah. Well, guess what? They're off. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's back to, you know, like we talk sometimes, people always ask for the truth, then you get it, and then they run. Well, there's nowhere to run anymore. This is the, this is the other problem that everybody's being faced with. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry to say, folks, but jb and 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 kh they're not going to make a hell of being difference no. they're not they're not going to what they're not going to the make it they're not going to make a difference what people are going to do is find themselves in the discomfort of reality that's mercifully un unmerciful you know like we said years ago Matter of fact, I did that lecture right around the corner up on Market Street, as a matter of fact. Evolve or become fodder. 
Mm-hmm. And the other thing that we talked about over the years that everybody uncomfortably is now put in the position of having to prove their God. Absolutely. And that can be said, that statement can be made confidently, affirmatively, without reservation. And guess what? No one will escape it. Based on their opinion or their belief. Matters not. You're so right. So thank you all for coming out and sharing with us at the House of Reawakening Minds. Nature's law, nature's God. And support the House of Reawakening Mind because the House of Reawakening Mind is in place to support you. Um, again, while the planet's being made, uh, uh, we're being actually prepared and actually functioning in transition. While the transition is being made, aid the House of Reawakening Minds because we're here to aid humanity, like for real, for real, for real. Hmm? Yes. Oh, share with us too. I'm going to share. I've shared this one before, but I just think it's relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it's the poem "When We Gonna Be." Oh, when we gonna be? <laughs> when we gonna be? We go out with this. I like that. <laughs> Trying to figure out who we really want to be, but still fighting and settling for a false identity that distorts and conceals our true nationality while trading places with the real enemy. Wake up, Mm. get up, when we really gonna stick? Do you know why there's no ground on which to stand? Because we're looking for redemption unaware we're on our land. They've got us focused on returning to one small patch of ground when throughout the universe can our presence be found. Yes. We're embracing his Tory while neglecting the glory of our ancient existence and deity. Truth is, living like thugs and paupers is the real tragedy. Yes. We protest and march blindly like lemmings off the an edge, but can't find time to study for some real knowledge. Yes. Predictably programmed for social response and reaction, oblivious to the fact we're being strategically distracted by the coordinated efforts of so-called deep state factions. Will our ignorance help their plan to depopulate the land so robotic AI becomes their newest slaves as we continually cry out to their mythos, what must I do to be saved? Or will we rise above their lies and reconnect with the most high who's not distant in the skies, but inside you Mm -hmm. where true divinity resides time to call forth the divine spark of light that decided with determined and might to journey nine months to a distant world to take up residence in a baby boy or girl yes see i'm not trying to raise a state but i am trying to get you to think on a more critical level you must know who is the real devil and not be fooled by what you're shown the jig is up their cover's blown This stuff ain't real, it's all a dream tied to an elaborate hocus pocus scheme to keep everyone ignorant and under subjection and the world in chaos in need of correction. See, they've never played fair. They play straight down the middle. And right now, most folks being played like a fiddle. So we must stop looking for help to come from a system that was designed to keep us trapped without wisdom. I know for a fact, we are the answer we desire to see. So tell me, my people, when we gonna when be? When we gonna be? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Oh, Shay, I say. Well, we yeah. got a couple for seconds, but thank you for minutes. Thank you so much. Um, I want to. Um, I do want to put up a promo in the last few minutes. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope you enjoyed that piece from my upcoming mm-hmm. book the thought hearing so right. um let me just put up this promo for our our brother i just want to put this back i'm gonna kind of i'm gonna put a banner like right up across your face time <laughs> for just a minute because i haven't i don't have a full i don't have mm-hmm. a full uh thing but this is something 
Um, I just want to make sure the banner is up in the actual promo. I hope you all are paying attention to our um, the, the, the advertisements that are scrolling, that you support our advertisers. Um, several of them are mine, two or three of them, um, but there are other folks there too, and we want you to support what they are doing. But yes. there is an event coming up uh, that the Moorish Spring is uh, doing. Let me just put this up. All right. So uh, it is a mock trial. You see the banner running yeah. at the bottom, Moorish American Alliance, um, which you can connect with at www.moorishspring.com. Mm -hmm. And it says, have you ever been inside a courtroom to defend your sovereign rights? If you have to make a quote unquote special appearance, would you like to know the tribunal courtroom etiquette? You are in luck. This September, uh, I know it's not going to be September because this was happening now. I Absolutely. think it's November. Yeah. I think I forgot to change the date, but I think it's like next week or something. Yeah. Um, IACH has organized an opportunity for you to learn what to do and not to do in a mock trial. So if you could reach out for the actual date and location, and maybe it'll be virtual, um, Moorish American Alliance, www.moorishspring.com. Please make sure that you check them out. Again, Grand Sheik, we got, actually you have four minutes left. If you, I don't know what we want to say. Again, as, as Grand Sheik said, we, we appreciate, a few of you have supported um, while we were online. Yes. A lot of you have asked for, um, links uh, for the USB drive. USB drive now, you know, we've updated it. Um, now it has 752 yes. documents. It's growing. Yes. Um, 752 documents. I'm going to tell you, um, hopefully, and that you may find one or two with the, the, that a link. If it's one or two links that won't work because it was attached to something else, please don't beat us up for one or two links yes. when you have 700 and some more yes. things there, please. The document that um, Grand Sheik is talking about is in the folder that says um, Taj Tariq Bay, I think, study drive. Yeah. Study, there are seven, eight study folders class. on there. Yeah. There's eight different folders on there. And so on the one that has Grand Sheik's um, appellation there, it'll be at the very top. It says public notice, I public think. Notice, public yeah. notice PDF. That's the latest um, yes. addition to his particular folder. Um, there's been some updates to the House of Real Awakening, Awakening Minds folder. There's a document with a folder um, that Sister Latrice Parson Bay gave um, some information to, and then a brother, Yerod L., they have been added yeah. to, to the mix. So order your uh, flash drive by, some of you have been texting throughout this particular yes. episode. I'm sending you back information. You probably, have, if you've already sent me a text, I've already sent you something back. Please support Support, support House of Reawakening Minds, even though we're not physically in um, having our, our uh, in-person classes. They just tighten the rules uh, yes. even more. So we'll be doing what yeah, we're doing. They're trying to shut humanity down. Right. But yeah, we yeah. still need your support because we still pay a lot of, of, of things mm -hmm. for the building that we're not using mm -hmm. like that. So we appreciate your support. And of course, we want and we need to support our grand sheik, mm -hmm. our grand sheik. We we have to support him. You know, it's no, it's time out for talking to a thousand, two thousand, or twelve hundred, eleven hundred mm -hmm. people, and we get two hundred notes. Mm -hmm. We we you know, if everybody sent a one note, we would be fine. But we appreciate those and of you who support us. Please, um, just make sure that you um like and that you share, and you know, you just if you're not subscribed. Please, please, please subscribe to our channel. It helps. We're not trying to get, I'm not trying to do it for monetization. I'm trying to get it so that people know that it's there. So again, we thank you. Um, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we'll look and see if there's any final comments that anybody, um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Getting that flash. Okay. Yeah. Hope you, yeah. Their cover's blown. Their cover's blown. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Well, we're not going right. to belay. You're still on camera, so I know you right. look. You, I know you're tired. Piece of read up. We'll get some more tea. <laughs> wait, you know, yeah. wait a minute. Let me take you on the peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> don't let you, go. <laughs> do, you don't have to do peanut butter sandwiches, Grand Sheik. I like peanut butter sandwiches. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. But thank you so. <laughs> Listen, y'all. We just being. We just being us. Thank you so much. Until next time.
peace and love.